Okay, so let's finish off um, this discussion with uh, the, the last, I think there's only about eight slides left. So sometimes instead of a dome at the crossing, remember the crossing is where the transept and the nave meet, right? Sometimes instead of a dome, there will be a crossing tower. All right, so the tower becomes kind of a square thing or it could be an octagon, it could also be a drum, which is, you know, what you would put a dome on top of. So it becomes important to understand that that thing has to be supported on something. Um, that and even um, an octagon or a, um, a dome has to be supported on something that brings those loads down to the ground. And those things are called the crossing piers. The crossing piers are generally carrying the heaviest loads of the structure, all right? And that's also where you might find above these, right, where it goes to the dome, where you might find something like a pendentive or a squinch, okay? Um, next thing that uh, we're gonna look at is this area that's usually at the entrance, but it can also be inside of the building, all right? It's called a tympanium. And it sits above what's called the lintel, which we talked about lintels when we were talking about Greek and Roman architecture and Mesopotamian architecture. Um, and these tended to be highly decorated, and they tended to tell stories, okay, of you know some sort of biblical event or some sort of a moral sort of issue. Um, one thing to understand about the Middle Ages is that the majority of people in the Middle Ages were illiterate. They didn't have access to books. They didn't have access to education other than what they might pick up from the church. And so a lot of times the architecture functioned in a way that instructed people in things that they would otherwise be able to read out of the Bible or out of a book. So important things to understand about what the sculptures are doing um, in these buildings. So let's take a quick review of the parts of a cathedral and we'll take a look at a couple of additional plans right here. So um, here we see um, a plan that has a single side aisle at the nave, but it has a double aisle at the ambulatory, or it has a double ambulatory at the choir and at the apse. Okay, so the, the, the parts that we're basically looking at that are important are the idea of the western portal, which could also be called the narthex, depending on how you look at it. The two side aisles or multiple side aisles, depending on where in the, in the cathedral you're at. The nave is usually very easy to identify. Okay, notice the piers. So here is a pier, here is a pier, here is a pier, and here is a pier. What would you think that these diagonal lines are representing? <clears throat> diagonal ribs, yeah. correct. The bigger lines in between the two are the, the rib vaults. So when you look at this, understand that you've got a curved thing, a curved thing, a curved thing, and a curved thing. There's four different curves coming together right there. Okay? Um, the crossing. <laughs> So in this particular case, we've got a square crossing. More than likely, it had a tower above it. All right. Um, the apse, again, it's the round end. The choir and these side aisles that go around the apse that separate where the laity might walk as compared to where the priest would be is called the ambulatory. Um, these smaller chapels are often called radiating chapels. Right? They're, they're little round pieces that get attached to the larger apsidal form. Uh, here's a cutaway view, uh, again, showing the inside of the cathedral. And so here we have a situation where the piers, okay, are essentially creating bays uh, that have a column sort of in between. And th this is kind of a little bit of a bastard drawing because really they're showing a they're showing a pier coming up here but the piers are really the larger ones that you see there um 
Here you see again the apsidal form at the end, the altar that's inside of what is this called? The choir. The choir, correct. You see the nave, the two side aisles, the transept, the crossing, the narthex up at the front. All right. That was kind of a short one, so, but it's the end of that video session. So I'm going to move to part three.